job and then we're done. I'll walk around, take over. So in this last example, if you guys were to look at this chat for, when we look up in this problem, I have y equals e to the x. Now, I was hoping you guys would try and attempt to graph this without really having any idea what e to the x is. And because as long as you know y equals a times b to the x. So what exactly is our a in this problem? One, One right? Now, e, you might not know. Now, I could see this could be a problem. e, do you know if this is a growth function or a decay function? But basically, if you just wanted to assume, you could say, well, I will assume it's a growth problem, and I'm going to graph it like that. Or you could have assumed it would have been a decay problem and graphed it the other way. But you guys see there's no transformations, right? No transformations. So you either could have assumed it was a growth and made it look like that, or assumed it was a decay and graphed it going like a decay. So I was hoping you guys would have at least attempted that, because that's really all you need to know. The only thing you guys need to know is A. Once you knew A, you knew the y-intercept. And that's all I asked you to do was sketch the graph based on one point, correct? Now, if you guys want to type in e when you guys, if your calculator, e is actually a constant. It is not a variable. e is going to represent approximately 2.72. Okay? And it's actually like a number like pi. It's an irrational. It's going to continue going forever. Um, but that will affect, so e is actually, if you could think about that, is like an irrational number. Okay? But it's 2.72, which would a grant thing. And the reason why I 